That is the only thing that Congress should be working on this week is how to stop people from being able to kill kids in school. Now, let me tell you, that does not involve gun control. That involves protecting our kids with guns. And so here we have these gun bills that the Democrats are bringing forward. They do not do anything to stop crazy people, stop mentally ill people from obtaining a weapon, any kind of weapon. It could be a gun. It could be a knife. It could be a car. They could make a bomb. It could be any anything that they want to use. It does not stop those people from doing that. It it literally does. That that is what like when you make it illegal for a person to buy a particular gun. Like if a particular type of gun becomes illegal, that does make it significantly harder to get that gun. I know that like we we are attempting to get through politically to persuade people who believe everything about the world based on what they've seen in movies. They think, oh, you just get uh, arms on the black market. You just go across the railroad. No, that's not actually. How it works, it's a little bit difficult to do that. Um, when you have background checks, the idea is that that will make it harder to get a gun. That it might, in some cases, stop someone from getting a gun. And the reason I know that they accept that is because they are so opposed to the background checks. If they thought background checks never stopped anyone who shouldn't have a gun from getting it, why would they be so deathly opposed to the implementation of them? But anyway, um, what you just heard from Marjorie Green was very similar to most of the Republican arguments against gun control. But just again, like in a much more stumbling and bumbling and obviously false way. What do you think, Jessica? First, you know, as a queer person during Pride Month, I have to point out she's got great bisexual lighting in the studio there. Don't know if that's intentional from Marjorie. I'm gonna have to see more of this video. What (laughs) I missed that. Yeah, Yeah, she's got bisexual lighting in the studio there. It's really good. Um, But yeah, Marjorie Taylor Greene talking about this. I mean, it's letting perfect be the enemy of the good, right? This legislation won't do it in every single case imaginable. Therefore, we shouldn't pass it. What? That's insane. Uh, Red flag laws do exactly that. They allow members of the community, friends, people who see online posts to report when someone could be dangerous, could be up to something. There have been so many cases when people have been aware that an individual is dangerous or at risk to do something like a mass shooting and it's gone under the radar. So many of these people have even been flagged by the FBI. We absolutely need red flag laws. And the background checks look into mental health data and mental health records. They look into misdemeanors and they'll look into domestic violence cases. And so for her to say this, it's like, has she read the legislation? Probably, but she wants to convince her viewers that it's something entirely different than what it is so that they're fine with her voting against it. Well, I I disagree with you about the probably that she's read it. And even (laughs) if she's read it, she definitely hasn't comprehended it. I mean, look, you've, you've watched video of her, you've listened to her speak. I, I don't generally, my my favorite mode to be is not condescending necessarily. I, I She's a genuine idiot, I think. Like I, look, what she, she said is these laws don't do anything. Like it literally is gun control making it more difficult to get a gun. That is literally the only thing that it does. The argument that it just doesn't do that. Well, then, then what's the problem? If you actually thought it wouldn't stop anyone from getting the gun, why are you so opposed to the law? Like. I don't know how we're supposed to convince these people, how we're supposed to get through to them when they just do not accept the most basic core facts of reality. Like when she says, uh, no, uh, less guns don't protect people. We just need more guns right around the kids. Oh, And also gun control doesn't stop anyone with gun. Like if you don't believe that laws can stop things, why do you support any laws? Why do you support immigration laws? Why would that be better at stopping migrants than the than these? Like. Why do anything with government? And obviously, look, I'm expressing my frustration. I don't know to what extent she believes anything that she says. And I understand that she's a part of a political movement that is designed to just gum up the works of government to make government like to make its path impossible, to make it impossible for it to function. The issue, of course, is that every single day that is wasted with with commentary like hers and and as we're going to get into the, the lack of the ability to sen- the senate to actually pass anything there are mass shootings literally every day there might well be a mass shooting being perpetrated as Jessica and I are talking about this story right now and again it, it feels like Jessica because our our job is in one form or another commentator analyst whatever 
our work is supposed to be in uh, changing people's minds and you know uh, moving them towards action. In this area, like people already agree on all of the proposed changes. They agree with us on background checks and on red flag laws and on assault weapon ban and all these different things. But it doesn't matter, it doesn't happen even though we've convinced them. So at that point, what are we supposed to do other than just sit and watch as more and more gun violence happens? What do we do in a situation like this? Yeah, I think about this all the time. And I know we're gonna get to Mansion, but I do think about this when it comes to Mansion a lot. And you know, where I've worked, we've done polling on issues of constituents living in certain districts, and we found oftentimes that the way they fall on the issues does not match up to their representative. Even when we take a statistically significant sample of the voter file that's representative of the voting population. So they support the issue, let's say like we're talking about gun control. Let's say in Manchin's district, 70% of people support universal background checks on all cases. If Manchin votes against that, what we should do is be texting everyone in the district, calling everyone in the district and spending money to actually reach out to these people and say, Manchin isn't doing what the people that live in his district that are his constituents want him to do. And honestly, I think it's a great way to run grassroots organizing. We could knock doors and tell people to vote for progressives. That's a good use of our time and money. But I think it would also be really important to do issue polling in their districts on all of the issues. And whenever they vote against an issue away from their constituents, we should be telling their constituents exactly what happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's difficult. I mean, so they, for for them to change their opinion on an elected official, they have to know what they're actually doing, and occasionally that actually works. Like people's you know view of Kirsten Cinema changed quite a bit over the course of last year. Um, in the in the case of something like Marjorie Green, I, I I have to assume that most people in her district have some idea of who she is, what she believes, and all that. The fact that they they want more of it that is truly distressing. For more political news breakdowns, interviews, stories of activism, and me trying my hardest to care about the occasional big celebrity news story, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the damage report. And you can ring the bell wherever it is so you don't miss anything.